Well, hello, that's me again. Today is October 12th. It's Thursday. We're nearing a uh, weekend. And uh, let me kind of introduce you to the issue of the what I call atrocity porn. And But before I go there, one of the greatest uh, American journalists, really, Mencken, in 1920s wrote an outstanding uh, treatise on politics and anybody who doesn't know who Mencken is, I would suggest you to at least start reading some of his uh, uh, writings, especially there uh, on, on the convention uh, and, and uh, how to elect the presidents in the United States. But what Mencken wrote in 1920 was this. And uh, hey, you know what? It's a combination of a uh, uh, collection of his uh, articles and essays called uh, On Politics, a Carnival of the Bancom. If uh, people think that Bancom somehow is related to Appalachia, it might well uh, as well be, but actually Bancom is the uh, euphemism for the stupidity and idiocy. And here's what he writes in 1920. As democracy is perfected, the office of president represents more and more closely the inner soul of the people. On some great and glorious day, the plain folks of the land will reach their heart's desire at last, and the White House will be adorned by a downright moron. I remember uh, this um, quote by Mencken have been used extensively by Democratic National Committee and Democrats when there was the issue of uh, you know, uh, electing Trump. For some reason, people stupid as they are, as like Bill Maher or whatever the late night or whatever shows we have those talking heads, uh, and uh, they think that they have culture and they're smarter than Trump. Trump is obviously, as it turned out to be, was a BS. So he was doing this for some other reasons, electing himself. But those people have no right to use this uh, actually quote whatsoever because it applies fully to what we have today. And again, I can sit here and elaborate on both uh, buyer's remorse and the uh, so-called intellectual level, or rather lack thereof, of all those East Coast and West Coast urban uh, democratic liberal elites. They are not that smart. They are very uncultured. But you know what? Sophistry and uh, ability to string several words and pretend it as it is some profundity while in re reality being a platitude, is what actually defines today American intellectual class. It is downright stupid. And as the result, while Trump was bad, I basically put the cross, cross him over in 2018 when he... Um, appointed Mr. John Bolton, his national security advisor, and you can look it up in my uh, blog. That's when I said, it's over. The guy is done. He is a stooge. And guess what? I was correct. But the point is, well, if Trump was bad, how about that? We have this guy as predicted by Mencken and as the people who actually express their heart's desires. I'm talking about American corporate media, American so-called intellectual class. And we have this. And I've been talking about the atrocity porn nonstop. Now, while uh, 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 Israel Defense Force does what it does best, you know, bombing a peaceful, a defenseless population from the air. Mr. Biden comes up with this. I mean, this is so bad, guys. It just, even men can probably didn't expect that level. U.S. officials have backtracked it after President Joe Biden claimed to have seen confirmed pictures of Palestinian militants beheading children in Israel. So, and now, the, of course, the White House spokesperson, they begin to all kind of, you know, scratch their head. And as they sta stated, the president based his comments about the alleged atrocities on the claims from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, spokesman, and media reports from Israel, the Post reported citing the White House. Well, we already have the issue with... Uh, 
as men can describe of the type of the people who are in the White House. They base their strategy, for example, of course, uh, in the special military operation and what is happening in Ukraine based on the, of course, reports of Kiev regime. And as the result, we have this situation which I'm going to be discussing a little bit down the road here in this video. But let's go back to Palestine. Palestine. And um, uh, as you can understand, as already stated, uh, I have no respect for the U.S. Congress anymore, and especially for the so-called Rhinos, which are Republican in name only. Fact is, I'm not Republican, really. I'm independent. I won't touch anything from Democratic Party, but at least in some, uh, you know, cultural senses, I have some commonality with some Republicans. But here we have this Rhino uh, boy who was uh, Mark Rubio and this guy and they talk that in the GOP extremist Hamas Israel rhetoric sweepstakes Marco Rubio takes early lead yes this boy who would probably soil his pants if ever faced with the real uh, situation of the in the operational zone when you have things flying around you but this boy actually wants to genocide essentially eradicate the Gaza strip so what can i say i mean do you expect anything from the guys who are completely owned by and in the pockets of by the american israeli political action uh, uh, committee apac and those people as i already stated i'm not talking about lindsey graham lindsey graham is a genocidal maniac he is a certified war criminal and who has to be behind bars and it remains to ask people of South Carolina I'm I'm sure I have many American friends and I have many American friends who I love dearly as you know as my very close friends that uh, there are people in South Carolina obviously who have common sense and they are not genocidal maniacs but they continue to elect him and then the same of course goes for people in Florida because this Marco Rubio do is ready to fight the world as long as he has his family remains behind the lines and some you know uh, sorry sob from some south you know uh, he goes and dies for him this is what those people are and now they want to basically support israel's genocide which is happening right now I'm not gonna lie. I do not write only for, for example, the uh, American or world audience in English language. I write about for Russian too. too. Few days ago, I wrote the piece which I say I don't want to be hypocrite because I'm not interested in the military aspect or intelligence aspect of this whole uh, proceedings around uh, Gaza Strip. I'm more interested, as I already stated, how much of War crimes against humanity and war crimes will be committed primarily by Israel now. And guess what? Israel doesn't disappoint. It basically flattens the Gaza Strip as much as it can. And you can bet your behind that obviously we have now confirmed and those are horrifying pictures of, you know what? Yes, my good friend Yava Bartlett, who by the way spent years living in the Gaza Strip. She published in the Russian uh, 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 network of Vkontakte VK uh, the videos of basically uh, Palestinian children blown to smithereens. You wouldn't like to look at that. But Israel thinks that it's fine. Bibi Netanyahu thinks that it's fine to genocide the whole people. And if you want to really listen to a good introduction into the, this uh, issue, you can look up my, uh, actually, uh, Anya's Scott Twitter and my conversations uh, earlier today where Scott makes an outstanding presentation on the issues or the roots and the causes of the problem and believe me Israel has a lot of things to answer for what they did in what used to be Palestine but as I already stated uh, killing uh, Israeli hostages is also not uh, anyway is justified but looks like actually Hamas started to release some hostages some who are gonna be next I don't know but they are doing this now and when you look at this this is why you uh, begin to kind of scratch your head that um, what can I say this is the West West went completely bananas about this but as I already stated and this is worth repeating again it was the 
perfect timing. That is why Pep, many people believe that it was done deliberately. But you know what? Quoting again Mr. Churchill, uh, that never let the good crisis go to waste. We have this perfect situation of the United States removing practically whole thing about the catastrophe in Ukraine and the strategic global defeat of the basically NATO in there. And what we have here is this. First, uh, today they state that oh uh, yeah support not indefinite white house tells ukraine uh, and mr kirby says it because and believe me i still have to kind of deal with my emotional scars after seeing how mr kirby was trying to squeeze uh, crocodile tears from him uh when he saw uh, he was talking about uh, talking to one of the u.s media about the israeli victims he is not going to be crying for the palestine palestine uh, victims but here it is even they have to admit now that and in ukraine on the ukraine funding we are coming near to the end of the rope he added today we announced 200 million and we will keep that aid going as long as we can but it's not going to be indefinite and he's talking about of course the situation with the shutting down of the government temporary financing and of course it doesn't contain this uh, support uh, financial support for ukraine and that makes a huge deal in terms of the internal politics uh, inside Kiev, uh, basically cesspool. Russians do not really care, honestly, if there will be support or not, because they are continuing to do their thing. And this is what I needed to talk to you about, because obviously the uh, Israel-Gaza uh, situation comes to help Biden's administration, because here is what we have. First, Suddenly, there are people yesterday, uh, and they talked to CNN, who contradict Mr. Austin. I'm not sure that Austin really knows what he's talking about, but uh, here it is. They actually uh, talk about people from Pentagon. Their concern is growing within the Pentagon over the potential need to stretch its increasingly scarce ammunition stockpiles to support Ukraine and Israel in two separate wars, according to multiple defense, uh, U.S. defense officials. You need to keep in mind that actually bunch of the ammunition, which is which is still not enough. It's a small uh, pittance, so to speak, uh, compared to what uh, uh, whatever is remaining of armed forces of Ukraine need, is the fact that um, a lot of it is actually North Korean and uh, intercepted on the Iranian ships and the, you know those 150 uh, uh, to 155 millimeters. So. Um, that that's not there really and of course now when it is combined uh, together with the situation which is unfolding in the Avdivka area we have to talk about it but before we talk about it here's also uh ursula von der leyen uh it's kind of you know the harking back to the glory days of russia attacks against civilian infrastructure especially electricity are war crimes cutting of men women children of water electricity and heating with winter coming these are acts of pure terror well guess what this is exactly what israel did to gaza strip but that brings us to the issue of the avdeevka and anybody who follows it and who follows now the dynamics of what is going on in the special military operation, including today's updated data for the, um, for the 12th of October, the aggregate, the aggregate for the uh, uh, October so far, 7,305 uh, KIAs on the Ukrainian side. We have increase in tanks and all kinds of APCs, uh, uh, annihilation by Russians. And it's probably going to increase because actually you can look it up. It's very easy to find, uh, to find where Avdiivka is and what is happening around it. You will see yourself that in the last two days, Russian army made significant uh, uh, insertions around Avdiivka, which contains the best 
and the most trained whatever is remaining of those uh, of the armed forces of Ukraine inside what is forming to be a cauldron and now this Avdeevka where which was I mean the Ukrainians were holding on it for the dear life because it is the basically the anchor of their most defensive lines in the SMO special military operation we have the situation that Russians control now the Terricons. Terricon is a basically the uh, huge mound which is a byproduct dirt ground what have you which grows after you um, uh, in the process of mining the coal there and of course Donbass is called the basin basin because it's coal basin there's not only coal there's also uh, other kind of like uh, iron ore and things of this nature and those terracons grow to be a very huge mountains actually the height of 300 feet or even higher and if you control them you can uh, uh, basically control their whole uh, um, um, visible uh, land around them you can easily calculate you can find the uh, range of visibility basically by uh, th there are formulas for that you can easily find how far you see if you for example on the height of the 100 meters or roughly 300 uh, feet the just google it it's up there and once you can see it this way you control you, you uh, basically uh, uh, get the fire control of this territory you can actually roll some kind of the artillery there light artillery and things of that nature and it's obviously perfect vantage point to do the visual recon and Russians are now uh, actually owning those terricons those mountains around Avdeevka and they closing the cauldron, the pincers around of Diyevka, and most importantly, they have the fire control of the only road, which uh, basically uh, brings supplies there. And that, guys, is going to be much larger than even Mariupol, because there are many more troops, armed forces of Ukraine troops there, including some very many NATO people there. So we have the situation developing, and it's uh, basically promises to be well um how to put it some uh, some people say it could be bakhmut but it's more looks like more like mariupol although let me tell you uh, it's where i and scott actually a reader agree russians may still keep it open for a while to allow more and more uh, uh basically uh reserves come in and then annihilate them but if that hasn't been enough we have also the situation of the advancement to on the kupiansk and uh, red Neman, uh direction and when you look at this my gosh i mean <laughs> you can see yourself the front is collapsing they still want to hold on to some portions of the front but russians do are, are not in rush really they just do their thing and their thing as i already stated is demilitarization and what is the demilitarization you just sorry to say it it sounds horrible but you just kill as much as many of your enemies as possible and you annihilate as much of the hardware as possible and most of it today be that financial support uh, be that uh, supplies it all comes from the west because russians are pretty much done with the annihilating most of the military industrial complex of ukraine and when you look at this uh, yeah it's the victory is there well i am on record i already stated military militarily ukraine has been defeated already a long time ago it's just the matter of how much they want to commit suicide and impale themselves on what is now not just a russian strategic defense and again strategic defense does not preclude offensive uh, uh, actions and russians attack and they attack along the whole front essentially and that's what make basically exhaust whatever is left uh, from uh, from the armed forces of Ukraine and Washington cannot be more pleased with the, this gift of the crisis uh, in Gaza Strip because obviously it takes uh, focus away from its catastrophe guys in geopolitical sense it is colossal and it also bears the uh, influence on the existence of NATO as we know it because NATO once things are done and wound down militarily somewhat uh, NATO will cease to exist as we know it but how and why it may take a, a really other special elaboration on that and the fact is that when you look at the numbers of the uh, 
basically losses of Ukraine. And now you have even agency France Press, which talks about the fate of Robotina, which also kind of disappeared from any headlines, well, together with Ukraine, that, and of course, uh, basically, Robotina became yet another fire cauldron, where Russians kind of uh, uh, baited bunch of the large forces of Ukraine into this basically hamlet, which doesn't physically exist, and they annihilated them. And as even Agence France Press now admits that uh, Ukrainians stating that they captured Raborian, it was nothing but PR campaign. Ukraine does not control the village. And here what they say, Ukraine does not fully control the village of Robotina on the Zaporizhia front, and the statement about celebration was PR. Of course it was. This was reported by Agence France Press, AFP, citing the words of the Ukrainian military from the 65th Brigade. According, according to them, the settlement has no strategic value. Absolutely. Russians loved that, that this settlement doesn't have strategic value, but it allowed to lure again all those guys from the armed forces of Ukraine for what? How many months now? Couple? You will correct me because I don't even remember. I cannot keep in mind all so many uh, data points, so to speak. But what I can tell you, there were tens of thousands killed in there of the armed forces of Ukraine. The worst part, which many people still didn't understand, of course you cannot understand when you're listening to those American generals who wouldn't be allowed to run their, uh, uh, you know what, uh, regiment, forget brigade in the Russian armed forces. That the Russians essentially had uh, in Robotina around 500 personnel. Most of it was conducted by the remote fires, and those 500 personnel kept on the key points and served primarily as the intelligence and recon assets. And when you look at this, and here is the number, and it's not, I didn't pull it out of my behind, so the uh, actually uh, uh, killed uh, ratio there was mind-boggling. It was 1 to 40 to probably 50 in this particular locality. Basically, that is why, uh, as my friend Marat Hairulin also stated, and uh, around Robotina, the regiments which were staying there, they were not even rotated because the uh, uh, casualties were minimal on the Russian side, while you had basically thousands upon thousands killed in a week in Robotina alone. And as I already stated, this is uh, what we're going to expect in terms of when the final numbers of the casualties on the Ukrainian side will be published, will be counted. It's going to be horrendous number. And again, we talk about half a million KIAs in about a million or so wounded. It's probably going to be higher. And especially when you look attentively now that basically personnel is ending. Because uh, Vladimir Putin already stated in all day, the present population of Ukraine is 19.5 million. And there is not enough uh, male, uh, uh, basically, contingent to staff anything anymore in terms of any viable military formation. And many say that actually right now you have the formations on the armed forces of Ukraine who are completely combat ineffective. They cannot fight at all. They are basically there indeed as a cannon fodder to be annihilated. It sounds horrible, but that's what it is. And that is why Gaza Strip and Israel genociding them is such a gift for the administration of Biden, which is described in the words of Mencken. But when you talk about people's heart's desire and, uh, you know, basically what is happening in the combined West, well, let me put it this way. Nothing more uh, demonstrates it's better than, for example, even Guardian uh, notes that British University offers master's degree in magic and the occult. And it is the University of Exoteris seeking to harness growing interest in the subject. Uh, let me put it this way. Actually, it's... Uh, not the first time. I can tell you that most political science, journalism, English literature, and things like that in Oxford, that also deal with primarily master's degrees in magic and the occult. You can take a look at Boris Johnson, Lee Strauss, or whoever graduated those uh, facilities because they really think magically, they have magic thinking, and I'm pretty sure they conduct some kind of the, you know, occult on voodoo, uh, uh, 
uh, ceremonies uh, when in their free time or maybe maybe I don't know just don't quote me on that if somebody watched uh, obviously late uh, late stand republic last uh, 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 film which is called eyes wide shot that gives you a hint who those people are and what those elites are dealing with so and uh, to leave you with a little bit of the funny side so to speak russians love memes about this but here it is as you can see yourself the latest russia burivesny cruise missile is as you can see yourself it is designed and made out of primarily chips um made uh, taken out of the washing machines and as you can see yourself it has the technologies of the precision guided shovels which russian used to such interesting uh, effect in the special military operation and this is what everything you need to know about those people and what can i say this is everything i wanted to tell you today and um as always guys those who like what i do please subscribe to my channel or those who can afford support me on patreon on buy me a coffee and two i would really appreciate this and what can i say have a nice coming friday maybe good weekend and i'll talk to you later bye bye